Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is Moon Moth Goddess. Thank you guys so much for being here. Your continued love and support. If you're new, welcome. You may also want to check out my second tarot channel, Neptune's Child Tarot, where I do also have a bunch of other pick a card readings um, posted for you guys as well. I am always available and taking bookings for private readings. Um, so those of you that are interested in that or any of the other services that I do offer, um, you can send me an email, which is located, um, or the email address is located in the description box. Just send me an email and I will provide you with more information on booking, um, readings or other services with me. So, um, today's pick a card reading, we are going to do, and this is one that was subscriber requested, um, by a number of you. Um, however, I, I wanted to take some time to think about how I was going to do this. Um, and it is doing a love forecast for this year, 2024. However, a year is a long time and so much can change, um, within that year, depending on where you're at personally, what you're currently dealing with, things like that. So I just kind of want to kind of split it up. Um, and just kind of look at what love looks like for you over the next six months. And then when we get to about June of 2024, um, then we, you know, June or July, then we can kind of revisit and look for the second half of 2024. Okay. So we're going to do that and just kind of stick with um, the first six months of 2024 and see what is happening for you in love. Okay. So... We do have three crystals um, for you guys. We have pile one is going to be a marine agate. Pile number two is going to be jade. And then pile number three is going to be red jasper. Okay. And those of you that are wanting to know what tarot, what oracle decks I'm using, um, I always list them in the description box of every single video that I upload. Okay. Um, so make sure you check there. Um, and you can, of course, do your own research with the, with the list that I've given you there to see which one is the one that you were interested in, um, so that you can purchase it for yourself if you want to. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see, let's pull something for pile number one. And these cards might have, I know they have a little bit of nudity in there somewhere, so I might have to cover up some of the imagery depending on what comes through for you guys. I'm going to put them all face down. And I'll just kind of check to make sure they're all good. So pile number one, what can you expect in your love life over the next six months? Whoa, let's pull them back here. I don't want anything flashing you that shouldn't be flashing you. <laughs> okay, um, let's actually redo that. Pile number one love for the next six months. Is that one that keeps, I don't want to take that one. Love for the next six months. Okay. So we'll do that for pile one, pile two. And then pile number three, love for the next six months. Okay. So now let's make sure we're good and that YouTube isn't going to, let's see. Okay. Pile one. Okay. You're fine here. We've got 19 Lou and that is with this Marine agate for pile one. Okay. And then pile two, I'm just going to quick check. Okay. So we're good. Uh, number 10 is chalk and that is with this jade. Okay. And then pile number three, I'm just going to take a quick peek. We're good here. We've got light rising in the east, number 35. Okay. With the red jasper. That is pile number three. Okay. 
All right, so pause the video if you need a little bit more time to meditate on the crystals, the artwork, whatever you feel is drawing you in the most. What does your love life look like over the next six months? Okay, so pile one with the marine agate, pile two with the jade, and then pile number three with the red jasper. Timestamps are down below, and I will see you guys at your reading. Hi, Paul One. So those of you that resonated with this beautiful card with the dear woman here um, and the marine agate, the artwork on these cards is beautiful. Um, so it's definitely very earth, earth energy. I'm seeing both the earth signs on both of these little uh, deer that are here. Um... This kind of makes me feel that you are someone who is definitely manifesting your soulmate. Um, if you're not already in a relationship, then I feel like this is you really focusing on also grounding your own energy, healing, um, nurturing the self, self-love, self-care. Um, this card talks about being on a soul's journey and the soul journey, you know, is definitely something that is lifelong. Um, we never stop learning. We never stop growing. We never stop evolving throughout our time here on earth. And so I'm, I'm also kind of seeing a lot of expansion, a lot of being very grounded in to your own energies, but I'm also getting a lot of you accessing higher knowledge, wisdom, um, intuition, gentleness, kindness, and I feel like all of these energies are important for you in manifesting, you know, love into your life if you're not in a relationship. And for those of you that are already in a commitment or a relationship, I feel like this is definitely being more grounded in your current partnership. Okay. I mean, we do have two deers that are here <laughs> together poking their heads out of her braids here. There's also two little birds here. Okay, so we're going to see what is coming through with your uh, tarot. So I wanted to use these. And we'll see what's happening. So, of course, take the energy how it resonates for all of you because, you know, some of you are in connections, dating, not dating at all, um, in the middle of a divorce, separated. Okay. All right, let's see. Pile one, what is happening in your love life? What will be happening in your love life over the next six months? Six months. Spirit, the next six months in love. We've got the Ace of Wands. We like that. And the Five of Cups. Why? <laughs> Why? Um, let's, let's pull a little bit more and see kind of what's going on here. We have the Wayfarer. This is the Lovers, okay? The Lovers card. What is happening in pile number one's love life over the next six months? I mean, we've got the Aces here. Ace of Wands, Ace of Cups. Hmm. Next six months in love. We've got the Three of Cups. <coughs> And we've also got the Two of Cups and the Spirit of Pentacles, which I believe is the King of Pentacles in this deck. Okay. Hmm. I want to know why this Five of Cups is here. I mean, because the Ace of Wands is about a new passion, 
new love, new opportunities in love. And I'm seeing you here with the Three of Cups energy here, especially for those of you that are still dating. The Three of Cups can definitely be about going out, meeting people. The Another important message with this card is patience. Okay. And that's kind of what this is making me feel like with the Five of Cups. Because you might meet and connect with people. For those of you that are actively looking for love or, you know, open to love. You may meet and connect with people. And not all those people are going to be the right ones. But I'm seeing the lovers here, the two of cups, and also the king of pentacles, which means that some of you might have two different types of connections come your way. Okay? And I feel like the important thing for you to remember is not to hold expectations right away with a connection with someone. It's more or less about kind of feeling things out and before you get yourself emotionally invested to kind of see what the person is about, okay? Because the Five of Cups can talk about disappointment and feeling discouraged. Um, and some of the people that you might connect with might be just for fun. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to be real, just for fun. And the connection could be passionate. It can be that there's lots of chemistry. But it might turn into nothing. And... I feel like you will need to really kind of weigh your options with where you might be at personally too. Because of course, some of you are just, you know, wanting to date and have fun and that's, you're fine with that. But others of you might be like, really like, okay, I want to settle down. I don't have time for this, you know? So yeah, I feel like it's continuing to kind of keep yourself grounded through connections and people that you do meet. I am seeing commitment happen. <clears throat> for some of you okay we do have the two of cups the lovers is here and the king of pentacles and this could be serious commitment uh the king of pentacles could be an earth sign taurus virgo capricorn and we also have earth energy here gemini um with the lovers we've also got cancer aries scorpio yeah scorpio and cancer I'm seeing commitment is something that is <clears throat> very possible for some of you. But um, even with this Two of Cups energy here, you know, it kind of reminds me a lot of like the scales in the Justice card. And I feel like if you are someone who's actively dating, this is about you <laughs> being cautious, right? With who you give your energy to. And like I said, not kind of holding out like... You know, it's kind of like when you go on your a date with somebody and you're like, you're thinking and you're fixating in your mind, like, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one, we're going to get married, we're going to this, we're going to that. And then it's like, that person ends up doing you wrong um, in some way. And so I feel like it's it's really important for you to keep yourself grounded. Um, of course, you know, we can't control our heart. We can't control the feelings that we feel for someone or the attraction or, you know, the passion that we feel, it, it just happens. But I feel like it's important for you to keep yourself grounded and being discerning so that you don't get hurt and you don't have, you know, expectations that are so high where this has to turn into a long-term relationship. Of course, yes, it can be disappointed because you feel, okay, I'm putting my time and energy here and I would hope, right, that this leads to something serious. However, this is where I feel like, you you know, the King of Pentacles is also something that takes time. It takes effort. It takes dedication and commitment um, into something. So, again, the message with this card here is about understanding, you know, that connections that are meant to last, ones that are stable, ones that are balanced, ones that are harmonious, 
they do require two people to be on the same page. So I am seeing that there's opportunities that are coming in for you. Okay, lots of going out, having fun, having a good time, especially for those of you that are single. Um, I'm feeling there could be even be two significant connections that you feel. And for some of you, that might be making a choice between two different people. Um, weighing your options, you know, is one person not looking for... I mean, because, of course, you could say, okay, here's these two people that I have a choice between. I'm really attracted to this one. Not so much to that one, <laughs> but this one wants commitment and this one just wants to have fun, you know? So I feel like you have to really kind of see where you're at at that point, um, what's important to you, what your focus is at this point along your journey of love. If settling down is something for that's important for you, then maybe we don't put so much effort towards people who are not on the same page or people who tell you, I'm not looking for a commitment. We don't allow ourselves to get emotionally invested into them. We, we're, we're protective, right? We're discerning. Okay. So I'm definitely seeing there's a new passion here. Um, some of you might feel like instant attraction with a person. Um, I do want to see why that five of cups is here because let's see. Yes, I am feeling that there could definitely be a commitment coming your way in the next six months for some of you. And it may even be something that happens um, uh, Gemini season, which is what? May and June. May and June. May, June-ish. Okay. Yeah, we've got a lot of cups cards here too. One, two, three, and five months. One, two, three, and five months. Some of you might even be connecting with somebody within a week from now as well. Maybe for a date. Um, let's see, why is the five of cups here? We've got judgment, which is awakening in this deck. Why is the Five of Cups here? We've got the Tower. Okay. So, yes, like I said, some of you, there could be a need for you to kind of make a decision here, a big decision. Judgment, and we've got the Tower. The Tower is about releasing something. Okay. Okay. Releasing something, releasing someone. Um, now, I will say, those of you that are already in a relationship, you're already married, and you're kind of at this place where you're feeling this connection is not really serving you, then there might be some type of epiphany or realization that you might have over the next six months about letting that connection go and opening yourself up to new love. Okay, and of course, it could it, there could be grief over the decision that you have to make. Okay. I've also, yeah, we've got Scorpio energy here. Eight of Cups. There's the walking away here. Okay, so this Eight of Cups is about letting go or walking away from things that do not serve you. People that do not serve you. Situations that do not serve you. I'm also literally seeing two, potentially two connections here, okay? Some of you might be feeling torn between two different people. Um, some of you could be dealing with third-party situations. And if you are, and, you know, ultimately this situation isn't something that is serving you, it may serve your highest good to kind of let go of that, especially if it's with a person who's married already to someone else. Okay, this could be really you letting go and opening yourself up to new love. And it might be a difficult decision, but it's really about, I'm seeing the Four of Pentacles at the bottom, releasing attachment, you know? Those of you that have, you know, had some difficulties here with love in the past and you're kind of feeling a little bit 
nervous about putting yourself out there again. You know, this four of pentacles can also be about us getting outside of our comfort zone. You know, getting out of our comfort zone. Okay, so what else do I want to see? <clears throat> Where can you expect in your love life over the next six months? We've got the fault line that's coming out. Yeah, for some of you, it could be something rocky here. Um, you know, the tower definitely brings in upheaval into our life, uh, changes, releasing things. Um, it can also be epiphanies and realizations, especially, especially for those of you that already have maybe a little bit of rockiness in a current situation that you're in. You know, it can be bringing in more upheaval, chaos, and maybe this is something that Spirit's kind of encouraging you to move away from, okay, and really open yourself up to new love versus holding on to a situation that is unstable, especially with the fault line being here, okay? To me, this is it looks like there's already cracks in a foundation, um, <clears throat> so that may not apply to all of you. And may even be symbolic of a certain person who you meet or connect with over the next six months that where something is, or maybe the person's energy is unstable for you. In that case, yes, you know, because we can have this happen to us where we feel a, such a strong connection to someone, but they lack the time. They lack the presence in the relationship, in the connection, into actually building something with you. You know, so we might have to make or you might have to make a decision here to say, OK, I really like this person, but they're not pulling their weight. You know. And that could mean letting them go. Letting them go, especially if you're someone who's not committed already and you're wanting a commitment, right? It's it's like not wasting time on people who's who's vision for relationship commitment is not in alignment with you, right? That's when we start getting ourselves into having certain expectations. Like if a person tells us, I'm not looking for a relationship, I don't want a relationship, I don't want anything serious. And then we, and then we start developing feelings and we keep going with it, knowing that this person told us, I don't want this, right? And then we start to have those expectations like maybe it's going to turn into a commitment. Maybe it's going to turn into a relationship. I shouldn't let go. I should hold on. And we end up getting hurt. Okay. So yeah, I'm feeling there's with this energy here, it's, it's a need for us to really, you know, keep yourself grounded. Um, pile one. Okay. Especially important for you. Okay, so let's see what else, what else is happening for you? Mm. What else is happening for pile number one in their love life over the next six months? The next six months in love, what can they expect? And some of you might be, like I said, deciding to uh, separate, divorce, um, let someone go. Trigger. Wow. Some kind of trigger here. We have open. I want to see a little bit more with what the trigger is. And then we have humility. Humility. You know, the tower energy can also come in as divine intervention. I'm seeing wound here at the bottom too. Okay. Um... The tower energy can be divine intervention in helping us to see something about a person, about a situation, and 
with humility here, this person is kind of looking up at the stars. And sometimes with the tower energy, we don't understand why a person was removed from our life, you know? But the tower can help, help to break certain connections down that are not meant for us, you know? Or cer certain illusions that there might be surrounding a love situation. And sometimes it is a huge wake-up call for us, a huge epiphany, you know? And sometimes there are a lot of chaotic energies that we experience up until that point where something is removed and those are the warning signs those are the red flags those are spirits trying to get our attention like this person is not for you you know and I feel like if you really like I said keep yourself grounded over the next six months be discerning don't allow yourself to get overly emotionally invested into anyone that is not putting in the effort you know which means not rushing in taking your time um, not getting ahead of yourself, right? I feel like it's, it's going into it in a place where you're open and receptive, you know, to building something and paying attention to how a person's pattern of behavior goes. Are they consistent with you? Uh, is it something that has lasted, you know, more than say three or four months where, they're consistent with you. They're, they're still asking you out. They're still texting you back. They're still calling you. They're still putting in the effort because you mean something to them. Or have they just completely dropped off the map after texting every day for, you know, a month and then all of a sudden they're gone and then they come back. So it's kind of like you have to really open up to see, right? And take your time. Um... So I do want to see what the, and I'm seeing heal here too. Heal is also right underneath the wound card. So maybe for some of you, you could be healing wounds. You know, you could also be looking at any person also that has been removed from your life or you may encounter that you end up walking away from that you understand that there are forces greater than you that are at work in your love life to ensure that you are protected to ensure that you are aligning your energy with the right person. Okay. So I want to look at the trigger here and see what is going on with this trigger. The four of pentacles. This is basically what's happening to you here is you're being triggered to change, to move. And for some of you, this is outside of your comfort zone. It could be releasing attachments that you have to certain people. Um, if you're someone who kind of um, is wanting love and you isolate yourself a lot, um, this is kind of triggering you to change. Step outside your comfort zone. Open yourself up. Um, for those of you that there is someone that you need to release, this trigger could be happening to get you to move, to change, to let go, to let go of something or someone that you have developed an attachment to, that you're clinging on to, even though that person may not necessarily be for you. Okay, so that's something important to kind of pay attention to. Is spirit showing me right now, you know, all the ways in which this situation is not going right? Like I said, I'm seeing multiple people come in for you, but like I said, not all of them are going to be the right person. And that is up to you to kind of use your discernment with where you put your energy right? Giving it to the right person because I am seeing something beautiful, balanced, harmonious for, for some of you that's actually leading to a commitment. And for some of you, it may be like a big train wreck where <laughs> the other one is just like, no, spirit's like, not this one, right? And we have to pay attention to that, you know, instead of trying to grip and hold on to it. And spirit's like, no, we've got to let this one go. Okay. Um, the joys of dating, right? <laughs> all these, all these things. Um, and you know, for some of you, like I said, if you're in a situation right now where you're feeling there's not any more growth here, you know, this person and, and, you know, and you are not really vibing together anymore. 
like I said, some of you, it could be already a rocky foundation here, and this can be you kind of surrendering into where spirit is guiding you next, which I'm feeling for many of you is new love. Okay. Some of you reconciliation may be possible. Okay. And I know that won't be for all of you, but some of you reconciliation may be something that is possible. Okay. So what do I want to do now? I want to look at some oracle messages here and see what else for you pile number one the next six months we've got look at that flow it says flow with ease don't force okay we also have autumn here with harvest and fruition so some of you hmm, this reminds me of the seven of pentacles energy and the seven of pentacles requires us to have patience much like i said the message with this card here you know it takes time to build something in order to us to harvest it requires patience it requires time it requires effort dedication commitment to something so if you're trying to build something with someone you know, and you know, you're a couple months down the line, and you're like, okay, how come this person's not committing to me yet? Their your message here is flow, don't force. Okay. Um, also, of course, you know, you want to make sure that your connection is something that is growing in a positive direction. You know, there are some kind of steps moving forward. You know, if you're like eight months in and you're still dating and the person's still not committing, we want to probably rethink something here. Is it worth it for me to continue on? You know, if nothing's changing. Um, so let's see what else. The next six months in love for pile number one. We have new love. New love. Perfect match. Like I said, we've got the lovers and the two of cups. So I'm seeing something coming in for you. Um, something that you will also need to stay away from. Okay. <laughs> not, not great. If spirit's kind of throwing in the tower and the eight of cups. It's like there's something or someone that, yeah, you'll have to make a decision here to maybe let go of one for someone who's going to be a lot more balanced and a lot more interested in actually building something solid with you. Okay. Let's see here. The next six months in love for pile number one. We've got strength. And for those of you that are, that are literally healing wounds here, look at the strength little heart here. It's all kind of built up so strong again. Okay. So that can be you kind of reinforcing, <laughs> reinforcing, healing. We've got love sick and it says void, emptiness and heartbroken. Like I said, for some of you, you know, and this can also be another person who chooses to walk away from you too. You know, the eight of cups is about emotional abandonment. And that could be if you're still healing from something um, someone who chooses to walk away, there could be some heartache there. Okay. We've got forgiveness. And I feel like for you, this can really be helping with healing. Um, some of you with the tower energy, like I said, you could be dealing with a breakup, a separation. Um, that could be something that makes you feel lovesick, you know, heartbroken here. Um, but again, we've got a wound, we've got healing, strength, forgiving, letting go. Um, and then we have you are a gem. No one compares to you unique. So this could be, and I'm seeing soulmates at the bottom. So two of cups is definitely soulmate energy. The lovers can be also, or can be a divine counterpart type of situation. Okay. And I'm seeing balance, which I feel like is really important for you, pile one, because we have our things equal time to make adjustments. This is you making sure that the person that you are connecting with is putting in the same amount of effort as you. 
Okay, our things balance. We definitely have something very beautiful though for you. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this here for you, pile number one. I do hope this was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, pile two. So those of you that resonated with the chalk card, this is going to be a reading today. So we're looking at what you can expect in your love life over the next six months, okay? So this chalk card is more or less speaking about um, purifying your energy. So I am taking this as healing, okay? Um, so we'll see what else is coming through here, but there's a big message with this card about healing, purifying, clearing um, your energy. So let's see what your tarot says here. What can you expect over the next six months in love? What can you expect over the next six months in your love life? And I'm also noticing this is number 10 here, which can be about endings and beginnings. It can also reduce down to a one. Completing cycles. New beginnings. We've got the two of wands. And the three of pentacles. Okay. Let's see what else. What can you expect in your love life over the next six months, pile two? We have justice. We have the moon and the ten of swords. Yeah, so this definitely looks like healing here. I mean, some of you could be healing from a breakup. Um, okay, I, there's another message that's coming through, and I feel like this is specifically for those that you are married Okay, I'm getting a marriage here. And I feel like there is a choice with the Two of Wands energy here that you will be kind of making over the next six months. The Two of Wands is about being at a crossroads. And I feel like where you might be kind of confused or even having personal doubts about is whether or not your connection is worth trying to rebuild or if you should file for divorce, okay? And this may even be, you know, like those of you that have been in a long-term relationship with someone. Um, Some of you, I feel like you might kind of be stuck in a place of holding on to someone that you are broken up with and holding on to an idea of reconciling with someone, okay? And that could, I mean, I feel like that's a tricky situation because... I am feeling like Spirit is saying here, you might really need healing, especially with this Ten of Swords here. We've got the Five of Wands. Yeah, and I'm seeing the Two of Swords is at the bottom. The Two of Swords is indecision. It's being stuck. And it can also be when we are in a place of denial. You know, when we're not wanting to face with things. So some of you could be, okay, like I said, I'm getting a couple different energies here. This, this pile feels more specific to people who are contemplating separation, divorce, 
And for those of you that have had a breakup and you're kind of stuck with the hope of reconciliation, okay? And I feel like there's a lot of inner conflict that you're dealing with of not knowing whether or not you should continue to hold on or if you should let go. And so I feel like this is why this energy is important because maybe at this time there is kind of time and space needed for you to focus on your healing or for those of you like I said that where you could be thinking about you know finding your way out of a marriage or a commitment here you know there could be a lot of fears to work through here a lot of insecurities a lot of unknowns especially for those of you coming out of a marriage you know it's scary it's definitely scary um because part of you might feel like, yes, I want to do this for myself because I feel like it's what my intuition is telling me. But to try to put into your mind trusting yourself and not being worried about what's going to happen in the future or what's going to happen, you know, can I take care of myself? Can I support myself? Can I, you know, all of those kind of things kind of run through your mind there. And sometimes that fear is something so great that it leaves us stuck and unable to make the decision to walk away or to try it and rebuild with the person. Um, so I'm definitely seeing a little bit of a challenging energy here for you, pile too. Okay. Um, some of you, like I said, you could be in a situation where you're trying to reconcile with someone and you're being met with resistance. You're being met with conflict. Um, so it kind of leaves, I feel like over the next six months, it kind of leaves your, for some of you, your love life kind of stuck, stuck, stuck. And of course, you can get yourself unstuck, you know, by making the decision to let go or to follow through, you know, with whatever plan that you have. Um, and some of you, you know, that you've had a bad breakup and you're trying to reconcile with someone, you know, I feel like you have to kind of watch out for, are you keeping yourself, are you holding on to false hope? Are you in denial and not wanting to accept the relationship as being over? Or even for some of you accepting that a marriage is over. Okay, so I'm feeling it's really important for you to just kind of really kind of focus on the self, focus on healing, focus on rebuilding your foundation, yourself. Um, yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely feeling a need for healing here. Now, those of you that have, you know, that you're going to be spending some time healing here, okay, and there has been someone that has really hurt you in the past. It could be an ex-partner, somebody that you've dated. I am seeing justice here, okay? And justi justice um, is basically saying that the universe is trying to restore balance within your love life. And this may mean that this time that you spend healing here over the next six months is something that is needed not only to bring your own energy back into alignment, but so that you are prepared for something new. Okay? Uh, connecting with new people, making the choice to move forward and let the past go may be something very important for some of you. Okay, to do as well. We do have uh, Aries energy here, Capricorn, Libra, uh, Pisces, Leo. Okay, so I want to take a look at this a little bit more. I want to look at the Justice card here. And Justice is also about us making a decision to serve our best and highest good and of those that are involved if there are others involved in your situation, okay? 
I know sometimes some of you are in like third party situations and you're the third party, you know, and you know, it can be painful, a painful type of situation. But with justice being there, this is saying that over the next six months, if you are in that situation, there is a need for you to make the best possible decision you can make for yourself. And there's a need for you to really connect in with your intuition and go with what your intuition is telling you, especially if it means walking away or ending something that you might feel you know, I mean, some of you too, you can be thinking, should I just end this? Some of you could be dealing with a friends be with benefits situation. Okay. A situationship. And you could be asking yourself, should I just, should I just end this? Should I just stop? You know, is this not really going anywhere? Because the moon is about, is about uncertainty. It's also about illusions and confusion. You know, some of you could be putting your time and energy into something that might not lead where you want it to and you could end up getting hurt if you hold if you continue to hold on to it right with the five of wands this can also talk about conflict differences challenges incompatibility right even if the two of you hit it off and there's a passionate you know connection between the two of you are you both on the same page do you want the same thing you know that is also something um to think about so let's see the five of wands can talk about fights, arguments, tension, drama. Okay. Why is justice here? Why is justice here? The ace of wands. Yeah, I'm hearing someone, you know, some of you are letting things go. And spirit kind of bringing in something new for you. I'm seeing the Six of Wands. The Six of Wands is about victory. It's about an achievement, an accomplishment, recognition. You being in the spotlight, getting attention, you know. And so those of you, like I said, where you're going to be spending time healing, you know, kind of licking your wounds in a sense. This is you rebuilding yourself. And for some of you, you need that time. You need that time of solitude and healing and rebuilding yourself so that you are ready and prepared for the something new. And justice comes into our life to bring justice, bring balance, especially when there has been some type of injustice towards us in the past. This is things kind of moving in your favor, right? And that could be spirit kind of moving certain people out of the way to clear the way for something new. So I'm seeing a new passion here with the Ace of Wands, the Six of Wands. Um, this could be something really beautiful, okay? But yeah, I'm definitely feeling a message here for those of you that chose this pile of, you know, being able to take that time that, that you need, okay? Some of you, yes, like I said, you might you might feel called to you know, pursue divorce, uh, separation, ending something here. And I feel like with the six of wands, the six of wands is about things working out in your favor, especially if there's like division of property and, you know, we've got a house together, we've got this, we've got that, and you're trying to get all your ducks in a row, then I feel like with the six of wands here, this is spirit saying you're going to be successful. Okay, especially if that's what you choose is to move forward with the separation. Things are going to be aligning for you in your favor. Okay, so let's pull some more. Let's pull one of these. Pile number two. What can you expect in your love life over the next six months? And some of you, like I said, it could be stagnancy. But the choice is yours, right? You can choose to heal, let go, surrender. Um, we do have the offering here. So some of you might have a new offer um, coming in here. I want to see of what, what is this new offer? What is the offering here? We have the tower, tower, which is revolution in this deck, but this is the tower. 
<clears throat> well, the tower energy can come in very unexpectedly, very sudden. Um, let's see what else. Why is the offering here? This, wow. This could be really amazing for some of you. The star energy. I almost feel like this pile, a lot of this is about letting go and releasing people that are not in alignment for you and spirit trying to help and lead you and guide you towards your destiny. Um, the person that you are truly meant to be with, you know, life partner. Um, We've also got Aquarius energy. I'm also feeling very strong Leo energy here. The High Priestess. Wow. I feel like over the next six months, it's going to be very important for you. Some of you are, are meeting and aligning with um, a divine counterpart here. Okay. Over the next six months. Um, a soulmate. However, whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, there is a very spiritual connection coming in for you. And so this, I feel like why Spirit is saying it's so important for you to heal, okay? Uh, to be ready for this, the caliber of this type of connection. This is beautiful, this is beautiful. We've got the Hierophant energy here with the mystic. And the High Priestess is here with the star, the tower. And the Eight of Wands is about something that's happening very quick, very fast. It's, it's going to be happening before you even realize it's happening. Okay. They are counterparts here, the High Priestess and the Hierophant. Um... Very spiritual. That is why it's important for you, okay? <laughs> That's why. Justice is happening for you and your love life. You're being aligned with the person you're meant to be with, pile uh, two. Okay? So we've really got to kind of like really um, work the next six months towards aligning your energy so you are ready for this. This is beautiful. That is an incredibly spiritual connection between two people. I'm getting divine counterpart with this. Okay. Now, some of you could be in separation with a divine counterpart. Okay. And this may very well be reconciliation with this divine counterpart. Okay, I'm seeing that here as well for you. But this is why it's so important for you to, to heal, to bring your energy back into alignment, rebuilding, working on your fears, your insecurities, um, doubts that you might have. Healing is so important. This is gorgeous energy. Okay, let's see what else. Taurus is here. Taurus, Pisces. Okay, so what else for pile number two? Leo season might be something uh, very significant for some of you, okay? Hmm. is what like July okay so pile number two what else for you what else for pile two soul definitely mm -hmm. I feel a very strong soul connection here 
and look at the inside too look at this this person's body it's like the the soul inside is like <laughs> i can feel it the energy the eight of wands is about energy that's in motion it's already happening even though you don't even you're not going to see this coming pile two your soul is like oh my goodness it's happening it's almost time this is so exciting oh my goodness okay let's see we have soften mm -hmm. yeah i'm definitely feeling this is like i said the healing is so important for you letting go of people that are not in alignment for you okay we should not have to beg someone to choose us, to love us, to be with us, to spend time with us. That is not love. Okay? Not com in comparison to what spirit is trying to bring in for you. Mm-mm. So, yeah, with the soften here, to me, this is you softening to the energy of love, embodying the energy of love. We have trigger here. Interesting. Pile number uh, one got that, too. Some kind of triggers here. I don't know. Maybe there's certain things that you're needing to work towards releasing and healing here, right? opportunities to heal um i want to look at what what's going on why is the trigger here what is this trigger how does this trigger relate to pile two how does this trigger relate to pile two the witch which is the magician which is about focusing your intention, willpower, to focus your intention on union, a balanced, loving, beautiful connection. You could be triggered into taking control, I feel like, of your energy, right? We want to make sure that when we are ma trying to manifest love or working on manifesting love, we're manifesting in the right energy, Okay, if we're man if we're trying to manifest love from this ten of swords pain, that is a low frequency energy, lower vibrational energy, right? When we're grieving, when we're suffering, pain and suffering is low on the scale of vibration. Okay? If we want this kind of love and spiritual high vibrational connection, we've got to pick ourselves up that means healing so something is going to be happening to you pile number two over the next six months and, and you know you might already be feeling it okay that spirit's kind of trying to really push you towards releasing letting go healing forgiveness choosing to let go of the pain letting to let go of this of the of keeping yourself in a place of suffering Okay, and actually doing what you need to do for yourself to get your to get your and reclaim your power and your energy from people from the past. So there's going to be something triggered within you focused intention coming, I feel like from a much better place, right? You're going to be more mindful. What kind of energy am I am I? manifesting from right now am i am i feeling sad am i feeling completely depleted is my cup empty do i feel scarcity do i feel lack do i feel unworthy do you feel insecure right this is you kind of pay, really paying attention to the type of energy that you're manifesting in because this right here like i said this is low energy pain and suffering if you look up 
Look it up online. Google search. Look up the vibrational scale. And look how far down the list pain and suffering is. And then where love is. Way up there. <laughs> Way up there. You know, underneath joy and enlightenment and things of that nature. You know, there's a need for moving up the scale in terms of acceptance, right? Healing from certain things of the past, forgiveness. Um, so that we may release and, and align the energy to this. Because in this state of the Ten of Swords, you, are not, you might not be ready for this energetically speaking and especially if this is a divine counterpart situation and it's your twin flame we've got healing to do right in order to align our energies we've got to work on our own energy counterpart has to do their part so that the two of you are an energetic match for each other okay same thing with the with a soulmate Energies have to match. Energies have to align. Otherwise, we're, we're, we're too far away from each other, right? Energetically, it doesn't work. They repel each other. Okay. All right. What else do I want to do? Let's do some of these. Pile number two. Your love life over the next six months. A love offer. New door to romance for some of you. Strength. Pile one got that too. This is a strong heart. Starting fresh. New chapter. Clean slate and starting over. Which is beautiful. Welcoming change for some of you. We've got steps. Movement forward and momentum. And that might be a big thing for some of you. To say, okay, I'm going to move on from this heartache. Okay. We have open up here. We've got shy, timid, and reserved. So that might be a person's characteristics for someone. Also, I feel like if you personally are someone who's very shy and reserved, maybe this is you finding inner strength within yourself, courage, confidence to get out there <laughs> get out there right we have slipping here with time to confront issues make a move okay maybe that means you making a move it could be maybe for some of you symbolic of a certain connection slipping away and there might be some issues that you need to confront with that person how to what can you expect yeah we've got unraveling here it looks like there's yeah look at that third party some of you could be in a third party situation and we have unraveling here. Truths exposed and falling apart. I don't know. Maybe some of you, it could be a third party situation that you're in that is falling apart for you. Um, it may even be some of you, and, and I know that this won't be all of you, okay? But sometimes you might hear some positive news in your third party situation where your person that you're involved with might tell you, hey... I'm getting a divorce or I'm leaving this person, okay? But some of you might not be so well. And maybe for some of you, this could be a situation that you need to let go of, okay? That you need to let go of because ultimately third-party situations, they're not great, you know? It, it's not, it doesn't put us in a good place, Um. You know, it, it kind of makes people feel like they're an option. Um, you know, is the person using you to escape what their current situation is? Um, there's a lot at play there. You know, they can be very challenging, very difficult to navigate for you. But some of you, you know, you might be, like I said, really taking some time to really think about whether or not it should be something that you should let go of, whatever the situation is. The third party doesn't even need to be another person. It could be family members. Um, okay. Something slipping and falling apart though here for some of you. And then we've also got a drift here too. Mm, so this kind of makes me feel with a drift here. We're seeing this little heart balloon that's just kind of drifting along in the sky. And I feel like if that is you where you're just kind of on autopilot in your love life, maybe this is time to, like I said, really focus the intention here. 
you know, be specific with what you're looking for in a partner. Write it down. Take time to write down all the things about the person that you're looking for in love. And don't make it so that it has to be a specific person. Okay? We don't want an attachment to a specific outcome. This is more or less saying, I want someone who's loving. How are they loving? I want them to love me this way. Um, it's not saying, I want this person whose name is first, middle, last, and, you know, because that is really just kind of not really keeping yourself open to possibilities. I mean, that person, you know, that you're feeling that way towards might not be your person, you know? So you want to kind of keep these manifestations um, in a way open so spirit can deliver to you what you've asked for right? If you want somebody who's loving, somebody who's emotionally intelligent, somebody you know who knows how to regulate their own emotions, somebody who's much emotionally mature, emotionally available for you, um, someone who's uh, confident in themselves, you know, like write down all the details, you know, instead of just kind of floating through and not really just dating all over the place, right? Without any really thought into what am I actually looking for? And it, when we meet a person, do they meet those? Do they, do they meet that criteria? What things are important to you, right? A person, like I said, who's emotionally mature, do they know how to handle conflict? Are they able to resolve it? Are they able to speak up and communicate and what their needs are as well as listen to yours, right? All of these things that are super important in being able to create and maintain a stable, healthy relationship. Okay, so start to think about what things you're looking for. And, you know, are there certain things that you need to change? You know, when looking for a partner, especially for those of you that are single. Okay. So yeah, that is what I have for you. Pile number two. I do hope this was helpful for you guys. And I will see you in the next reading. Hi, pile three. So those of you that resonated with this card here, this is going to be your reading today. So we're finding out what is happening in your love life over the next six months. Um, and this card is talking about you being able to see the truth of a situation um, changing from a place of confusion into clarity. So if you're currently dealing with a person or a situation, I feel like you could potentially be receiving the clarity that you need from spirit. Um, maybe many realizations that you might have within yourself through your own intuition. Um... And if you are somebody who's single, you know, maybe this is kind of having some type of realizations about yourself, maybe things that you notice about yourself, maybe being a little bit more self-aware of certain patterns of behavior that you might have when it comes to romantic connections, things that you change, work on um, to help you with your own growth. Okay, so we'll just kind of see what comes through. Uh, for you. We're looking at what's happening in the next six months for you in love. And keep in mind, this is a general reading. All of you are going to be in very different love situations. So take the messages how they apply to you personally, okay? there's something specific that comes through, then I will let you guys know. Pile three, pile three, your love life over the next six months. What is happening in your love life over the next six months? This one's just dying to come out. <laughs> we have potential, which is the fool card. Okay. The fool is about a new beginning taking a leap of faith, starting fresh, starting new, exploring, opening ourselves up to possibilities. Pile number three. 
what is happening in your love life over the next six months. Aquarius energy. Make that full card. Maybe this is a new way of thinking for some of you. We have the Ten of Wands. Yeah, so we, the Ten of Wands energy is about ending uh, or bringing to an end a very tough cycle. Maybe that some of you have gone through. Okay. Um, this is when we are kind of being weighed down energetically by holding on to a person, a situation, stuff from the past. Um, and the full energy is definitely very, a very light energy, at least energetically speaking, because the full is about us kind of being a newborn soul in that we're not bringing our past baggage with us the only thing that we're bringing forward with us towards this new beginning is experience okay experience um which means lessons that we've learned okay let's see what else we've got the three of wands wow ace of pentacles and then we have the Nymph of Swords, which is the Page of Swords. I mean, we have potential here. <laughs> so this could very well be potential with somebody here because the Page of Swords, you could be connecting with an air sign. Like I said, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You also have uh, Aries, Sagittarius, and Capricorn. Let's see what else. Spirit says there's potential. That's good enough. <laughs> That's good enough. There's potential. Let's see. We have the monarch, which is the emperor. This could also be Aries energy. So what I'm kind of feeling here for you, pile number three, is that We have a new opportunity here with the Ace of Pentacles. This is a new start, something that's tangible. So this could even be um, you know, meeting someone new, talking to someone with the Page of Swords energy here. This could be uh, uh, maybe even an online connection, a person that you meet, okay, with the Page of Swords, online dating. Um, some of you with the Three of Wands energy here, this might be, mm, for some of you, it could be somebody that lives a, at a distance, okay? So there might be some type of travel that's required. Now, being that we also have the Ten of Wands with that Three of Wands, where I'm saying I'm kind of maybe it's a distance connection, it could create a little bit of some challenge here, you know, especially with the Ten of Wands. Um, long distance connections are ones that definitely create a lot more um, challenges in terms of trust and putting in effort, okay? Putting in effort to see each other, talk to each other, um, things of that nature. Um, I'm seeing for some of you too, there might also be a potential for relationship, actually a commitment here. Okay. Um, some of you, I'm seeing this happening by airy season. Some of you it can even be happening as fast as Aquarius season. Okay, Aquarius season, which is what? We're almost in Aquarius season right now, are we? January. I don't think we're at the, the change yet. We might still be in Capricorn. Switching to Aquarius pretty soon though. So Aquarius season which is something that happens over July and February, part of February. Um, I'm also seeing, like I said, Aries, which would more or less be, uh, what is it? April, March, April. Okay, so some of you, this is happening pretty quick, where there could be a new connection that you do um, encounter with someone, and Spirit is saying <laughs> there's potential here. Um 
the potential for something tangible with the Ace of Pentacles and the Emperor, which is about something solid, something, you know, stable, secure. Um, so I do want to get one more. Especially for those of you that are not already in a relationship, okay? Those of you that are already married, already in a relationship, um, then this may be a good thing for you in that you are making it maybe past a little bit of a challenging time that you may have had in that relationship. And so this could be really working towards learning how to really communicate with each other, work on the way in which you express things to one another. For some of you, maybe this a new beginning or reconciliation is something that's possible. Okay. Um, yeah, but I am feeling with the Page of Swords energy being here, there might be a need to work on communication. Okay. Uh, expressing yourself and, you know, of course, listening to the other person as well both of you working on communication especially if there are communication issues that are there but the page of swords can definitely be us receiving a message good news okay the three of wands some of you might already be waiting for some type of communication to come in and i'm feeling that you might receive that with the page of swords here okay let's see what else The star, beautiful. Okay, Aquarius. And the star, uh, yeah, definitely Aquarius energy coming through. We have the fool and the star, both Aquarius. The star is basically telling us to have trust, to have faith. Okay, not to lose hope and love. Um, to believe that we will align with the right person in perfect divine timing. Um, the star is also about wishes being fulfilled. So some of, maybe some of you have some type of wish for meeting your future spouse or, you know, someone to be in a committed relationship with. And I feel like that is definitely something that is very possible for you to meet and connect with this person over the next six months. Um, like I said, I do feel like this is happening pretty quickly. The Three of Wands is about something that's on the horizon, something that's coming in um, for you. I'm even getting some of you might even find yourself in a very serious commitment within the next year. And I know that I was tr only trying to focus on six months, but it's here, so I'm going to say it within the next year. Some of you might be meeting your your uh, life partner. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm seeing that here as well. And others of you, I'm getting the star energy here, you know, is it's healing. It's renewal. Uh, especially for those of you that have been feeling a little bit challenged um, within your love life. It, maybe it's been rough. I know it's rough out there. I do readings every day for people and I hear the stories, you know, so I know, I know, I remember what it's like. My dating experience wasn't any better than what all of you are going through. <laughs> it was painful and it was, I was so just fed up and tired and so sick of it. <laughs> so sick of it. So sick of being ghosted. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. It gets it gets old, so I totally feel for you. But yeah, let's clarify a little bit. Um, let's see what this Ace of Pentacles is. Why is the Ace of Pentacles here? Some of you might be receiving some type of communication um, the next eight days. 
Okay, eight days may even be, well, yeah, eight days. It could be, like I said, some of you might be a little bit longer than that. Could be eight weeks. We are talking about the next six months, so let's see. Temperance. I am feeling this is going to be a very balanced energy coming in for you. Very balanced connection. Uh, Sagittarius energy is definitely here as well. And we have meditation, which is the hanged man. I'm also feeling for you, pile number three, there's also a need for you to really kind of um, work on balancing your own energy, healing your own energy. This may even include changing your perspective, especially, you know, with the Ten of Wands being there, we can feel really tired, fed up, drained, exhausted, just depleted. You know, and in that case, if you're feeling that way, take the time to restore and replenish your own energy. But for some of you, you know, with, with the hanged man being here, this can be about changing your perspective. You know, because if we've gone through some pretty challenging relationships already, we can have a very, I feel like, challenging perspective as it relates to love, you know, and I was there too. <laughs> like I said, I felt like I was just like, no, I am done with this. I'm so sick of people hurting me and all this kind of stuff that I was just like, F love, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure some of you have felt that way too. Like I am not doing this anymore. <laughs> you know, when you just like, that's it. I'm giving up. I'm going to be single forever. You know, we all, we all get there. We're all, we all have been in that place. Um, but I feel like the important thing that spirit is kind of wanting you to focus on is again, the star energy, which is about not losing hope, not losing faith and, and having more trust that, you know, the people that we connect with in our life, you know, they're there for an important reason. We're learning, we're growing, we're evolving. And sometimes all of it doesn't make sense until you actually meet the person that you're meant to be with okay you really are able to recognize and see the difference you know and it gets frustrating because you're like why is spirit showing me all these different things about what love is not why can't you just give me what what the you know the right person already but you know there's things that we have to learn we're all here to learn we're all ha ha you're here to learn how to love, how to love ourself. You know, how can we love another person? How can we expect another person to love us when they don't love themselves or when we don't love ourselves? We don't value ourselves. We don't respect ourselves or vice versa for them. You know, so challenging. But yeah, I'm kind of seeing here where spirits like, um, it's also Pisces energy with the hangman. That spirit is kind of wanting you to really focus on changing your perspective, maybe even healing it, you know, certain things. And also with the Ten of Wands, if you are holding on to something energetically from the past, guess what? We've got to heal. We've got to let it go. We've got to work on releasing ourselves from that energy. Okay. Again, the fool is about taking a leap of faith, exploring, opening up. It's, it's, you know, new possibilities, new potential, but we can't bring our past with us. Okay. As much as we'd like to <laughs> for some people, you know, it's hard. It's hard to let go. It's hard to release, but I feel like spirit is really wanting you to work on, you know, um, transmuting energies transmuting energies but I am seeing a very beautiful um, connection coming in for you okay and I'm also seeing the queen of wands here at the bottom and the queen of wands is about you know really feeling empowered beautiful confident attractive handsome right just 
just being in your power, glowing. Some of you might be going through a glow up. Okay. Which is which is beautiful. Okay, let's see what else for you. I'm going to pull one of these and see where can you expect in your love life over the next 6 months. This one. Ooh, the animal. This almost feels like this there's passion, fire within you in a sense this kind of being you know, I mean, we do have the Queen of Wands here, so. A lot of very passionate energy here. She's also got a little cat here with light eyes. And maybe within you, this is, you know, reigniting things within you reigniting passion, confidence, um, self-esteem for some of you. Like I said, I'm kind of feeling like you're going through a glow up here. Um, going through a glow up. Let's see what else. Pile number three. Wisdom. Wisdom. And the hangman is also about insight, enlightenment. You know, so there could be, you know, a huge realization that you have about yourself, like I said, for some of you. Um, your approach, or even another person, another situation that you've been in. Okay, there's definitely wisdom that's being gained here. What can you expect in your love life over the next six months? We have open here. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling that there's some type of epiphany or realization. You have multiple cards here that are talking about that type of energy. You're seeing, you're having clarity here. From confusion to clarity. You know, and sometimes this might be saying, okay, this is what I'm doing wrong, right? When we look at also at our blockages. We have humility. And we have create here. I'm feeling that with this information that you will be given either by your spirit team, your higher self, it's really going to be very humbling for you. You know, because this person here is kind of looking up at the cosmos, you know, and the stars. And I feel like this is you kind of coming to a place within yourself with more peace. Right? Understanding that there are forces greater than us that are at play with the divine perfectly orchestrating our life, even though down here on earth, it can get frustrating because <laughs> we're not let in sometimes with what's happening. But, you know, connecting in with the self, your own intuition is definitely very helpful for you to receive the guidance that you need to at whatever point you are at on your journey to love, you know? And then we have create here too. So this almost to me, you know, looks like this person here is kind of carving out someone here in this, in this uh, clay. And so maybe this is you also really working on manifesting the person of your dreams into your life. Okay. Maybe somebody that's unknown to you that you also haven't met yet because there's no eyes there. Okay, let's see. What else? Pile number three. What can you expect in your love life the next six months? We have cycles. Look at that. Cycles. Repeated patterns. Learn to break free. And maybe for some of you, you could be, like I said, realizing 
certain patterns of behavior and you're like, ooh, I need to change that. I need to work on myself. Okay. Then we also have perfect match here. Completion and the one. And maybe through you doing that, you know, acknowledging where your patterns are, you know, that's just kind of like, let's just say this is the quickest one that I can think of. When we attract or we're attracted to people that are emotionally unavailable, right? And we know they're emotionally unavailable, but we keep doing the same thing over and over and over and giving our time and energy to people who are not open to receive it. And we keep making that mistake over and over again, right? Stop putting energy there so we don't get hurt, right? That could be something that you notice about yourself. Like, why do I keep doing this? And you finally have this epiphany. Okay, once I see someone do this or they're not putting in the effort, be done with it. You know, I feel like that definitely helps you to align your energy into a better direction with with attracting the right partners and being attracted to the right people. Okay. So we also have blessings here. Love offer. New door to romance. We've got new love coming in. And we have locked here. Locked. Now this may be a person that you're dealing with or it can also be you. So if you are someone who is super guarded, okay, if you notice maybe that about yourself, you're attracting people like that who are blocked or, you know, closed off. Or if you notice that you yourself are extremely guarded, right? In that type of energy, when we're not letting our guard down, we may attract people who are also emotionally unavailable for us just as well. Okay, or people who are avoidant. Um, so I feel like it's good to kind of check in with self, right? What kind of energy am I putting out right now? What kind of, what kind of people am I? That, that would be a good reading, I think. What kind of, mm, how do I even say it? Like what, what kind of connections am I attracting right now? So we can see where your own energy is at. Are you attracting healthy, balanced, loving, open-hearted connections? Are we attracting avoidant, closed off, wounded people? Okay, that might be good. If you're interested in that, let me know. I might I might think, I don't know if I should put it on this channel um, or the other one, the Neptune's Child. The Neptune's Child one is more for people who are really focusing on themselves and healing and all that other stuff. And I don't know how that will be received here. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes when I post things that are, that are other than focusing on just love, people don't watch it. So I might just put it on the other channel. Okay. So let's see what else. We have happy home here. Things going well, happy, content. We have affectionate, lovey-dovey, passionate PDA. And then we have makeover. You see, I told you guys are going through some type of glow up here. I feel like this more or less is the cycle here that you're breaking free from. So by acknowledging this and changing this, you change your energy here. That's what's happening. There's a shift happening here. And it leads to more fulfillment. We've got a psychic connection and traditions here, which is a person who, especially if you're looking for a committed partnership, this, this is kind of remind me a lot of the, the Hierophant energy, a person who values or wants something like a traditional commitment. I want to be in a relationship with someone. I plan to get married. I want to have a family. I want to, you know, so yeah, this to me looks like you're kind of, this is what you're, the realization that you're having is that are you, you know, holding on to people who are emotionally blocked, closed off, and you're giving your energy to them. And this is where you kind of have the epiphany and say, oh no, I'm going to stop doing that. Or if you're the person who is like, I want love, I want love, I want love, but this is what you're coming with. 
You know, in order for us to attract love and connect with another person emotionally, we have to let that guard down. We have to be vulnerable. Okay. Does it mean that we can't set some good boundaries and be discerning? But we still need to be vulnerable to some degree to connect with another. Okay. All right. So that is all that I have for you. Pile number three. I do hope this was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading.